This podcast is brought to you by Knowledge at Wharton. Please visit knowledge.wharton.upenn.edu for more information. There are uh, a lot of similarities between the two candidates. So uh, McCain uh, has had a long history of being in favor of a climate change statute. In fact, he was one of the first co-sponsors of a climate change uh, regulation statute in the United States and uh, has fairly consistently supported ne- new generations of those uh, of, of those kinds of uh, those kinds of approaches and also Obama has uh, committed to a climate change regulation uh, the target for the Obama campaign is slightly more ambitious than for the McCain campaign but I actually think that uh, what voters probably should focus on the most is who is going to be the most likely to provide the necessary leadership if you're in favor of climate change regulation. I think both of the campaigns are, uh, are supportive of developing alternative energy uh, sources. So new, uh, both sides have committed to significant increases in, in funding, uh, probably subsidies of certain kind of mix. Both candidates have said, at least in their campaign, that they're in favor of developing new alternative energy technologies such as solar, wind, uh, geothermal. Uh, uh, Both are in favor of nuclear, for example. Uh, So I think the question, the difference there uh, uh, depends on what you would uh, would see as as emphasis. So for example, the McCain campaign seems to be much more strongly pro-nuclear uh, there's been a commitment of 45 new nuclear power plants in the near term, uh, building up to 100 nuclear plants. That's a fairly significant shift from a situation where we've had zero new nuclear power plants built in the next in the last 30 years. Um, now, the Obama campaign is also in favor of nuclear power development as a part of a mix of other alternative sources, but I think it's, it's fair to say that the McCain campaign seems to rely uh, more heavily on nuclear as well as the, everyone knows about the, bil- the drill baby drill uh, uh, claims and the argument that we're, um, we'll, we'll increase significant supplies of uh, petroleum domestically. I think there's a significant difference between the two campaigns in terms of developing uh, oil resources. Uh, I think the Obama campaign is in favor of some uh, some limited development of oil resources that we have here. There is a position to put additional pressure on oil companies to exploit resources that have already been allocated to them. Uh, McCain seems to be very strongly in favor of uh, drilling almost as much as you can. Uh, uh, opening the Arctic, uh, it seems to be at least a, a potential uh, a, a potential approach. Um, so I think that um, the, the more general question is how, what, how much is that really going to matter? Uh, if you look at even if you maximize your, your dr- the drilling capacity in the United States and all of our resources, I think the best estimates are you don't really make much more of a dent. In, you, you don't make a very big dent, maybe 2%. Uh, of, uh, of total supply would be affected. So you're still going to be, if you don't change the overall mix of your energy supply, you're still going to be fairly heavily dependent on overseas oil. Both campaigns have made a commitment to becoming independent uh, of, the, of, of, of uh, overseas, uh, overseas petroleum resources, but uh, it, 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 it doesn't, there, there's some question about how each one of those, each side would, would try to achieve that. Well, I think some people raise this issue and, and suggest that the commitments that both campaigns have made to, to uh, new energy resources, and in particular the, the, the Obama campaign's uh, a commitment of, of funds to energy resources, would somehow be, somehow be compromised by the current crisis. And I'm not sure that really, uh, that, that's really going to happen. You, you're going uh, you're gonna to have significant challenges economically and those challenges depend directly on energy supplies. So the extent to which your economy runs is quite directly dependent on energy supplies. And so I don't think you can sidestep this issue. Uh, it may be that will be more, somewhat more expensive. You may, uh, the, the, there may be decisions taken that you would not be able to balance the budget as fast as you might otherwise try to do it. I think one of the reasons for that is, uh, is to understand energy also in a geopolitical context. 
uh, that the question of uh, energy independence isn't just a question of economic viability or growth in the United States. It's also uh, a question of who has uh, most of fossil fuel resources in the world. You know, it's likely that both sides will, will be developing policies on energy. And then the question is, which uh, I think for voters, is which one do you think has a better uh, version of how to develop? Uh, my own estimate, and as, as we've discussed, I've been, uh, I'm, I'm in favor of the B Obama campaign, and so I'm a, I'm a volunteer and have offered, um, offered advice to the campaign, although I'm not a, I'm not a spokesman for the campaign. Uh, but my feeling is that the Obama campaign is more persuasive and has a better strategy about, uh, about how to go about uh, doing that. My sense, uh, again, this is partisan, but my sense is that the McCain campaign basically has an old-fashioned idea of how you're going to advance uh, in this area. You know, ideas of really expanding uh, nuclear, uh, drilling more. These are really traditional kinds of approaches to the problem that I don't think are going to do it. Well, I think what you really need is uh, the commitment to, uh, to, to fund and to provide uh, good economic incentives for the development of new kinds of energy supplies. You can't really force the development of new technology very easily. Now, at the same time, there have been uh, uh, times in history where there has been a specific kind of technological problem, say going to the moon or developing a Manhattan Project in a weapons uh, sense or, or other, kinds of, uh, other kinds of examples where there was a very high strategic priority identified and that the government decided that uh, there should be investments across maybe an array of different possibilities uh, to try to achieve uh, a strategic objective. And I think that those have been, uh, those have been successful in, in history. But I think it's also true that you need to try to get the economic incentives right. And I think one, uh, one area, one place in which to start is to look at uh, the subsidies that are currently available already to, you know, are available to traditional fuels. So there's a lot of oil subsidies, for example, that are being paid, and there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of implicit subsidies that are given to the coal industry, et cetera. So I think one question is to let's first get the economic playing field uh, level, uh, and then it might make sense to provide certain kinds of subsidies for, uh, uh, for, for, different, for different proposals. Uh, but I agree that it's very difficult to select the winners in advance in this way. But uh, another uh, basic way to encourage innovation that is not a government-centered uh, approach is to provide the right incentives. So, and what that means in the environmental uh, uh, area is that you would have correctly co correct costs. So there's a lot of externalities and the use of different kinds of fuels. Uh, and if you can, uh, you can provide uh, the accurate accounting for those costs in the use of those fuels, then you start to level things out. Now, politically, that's been very difficult. Neither campaign has, uh, ac has actually said that they would be in favor of a tax, for example, on uh, coal, uh, carbon, uh, oil. Um, now, many economists would say that's the best approach uh, because what you do is you provide the correct incentives that way for someone else to develop alternative methods of fuel. Uh, the other uh, thing that you do with that sort of approach is that you encourage efficiency measures. Energy efficiency is one area where there's a lot of gain that we could have uh, and uh, it wouldn't take a lot. You, the technologies are known. Uh, government policies would not be that difficult to, uh, to implement. Uh, you'd have clear gains. And so the, 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 the potential for energy efficiency to solve a number of these problems is something that, that, that I think is going to be important. I think, the, I think the price of oil has, has shown a lot of volatility. And one of the reasons it's shown a lot of volatility is that it's geopolitically, uh, there, there's, there's a lot of sensitivity to what exactly is happening there. So I think an, a, a short-term fluctuation in the price of oil, if it goes down a little bit, uh, or uh, uh, if, it, if, it, if it radically spikes, really should not determine policy in the long run. Now, I think we made a mistake in the United States where uh, during the Carter administration, the, there was a, uh, a spike in oil prices because of OPEC, and there was a push to realize, you know, should be energy efficiency, et cetera. And we basically forgot that lesson, and we fell back into a complacency about energy resources. Uh, we, uh, I think even George Bush, uh, somewhat ironically said uh, that we got addicted to oil. 
uh, it was a, he was a little bit of a late convert on that particular issue, and I think some of the policies suggest that that's somewhat, um, well, as I said, ir ironic. But um, but the but the point is that we've I think now learned our lesson, and we see that the geopolitics of oil are are extremely difficult. Um, it, we're, the United States is in a much weaker position if we don't develop alternative energy sources that are that, and, and we're not dependent. And so I actually think that for a, from a long-term perspective and from the point of view of policy, uh, that that will not affect uh, the commitment which is emerging that we need to develop new energy sources. For more information, please visit knowledge.wharton.upenn.edu.